Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions and today I'm going to be showing you the new Unify Access Ultra. This is Unify's new two-in-one device. So essentially it's a reader and a mini access hub all in one and it will allow you to connect stuff like a electric catch lock or a mag lock and a push to release button to have one system all controlled from this little device. Okay, so I'm on the Unify store and I'm at the door access and here is the Access Ultra. So I just quickly want to give some context on this and why I think this product will be quite successful and how it's kind of filled a gap in the Access lineup. So if you were doing a simple solution like I'm going to be showing you today where you've got a mag lock or a catch lock and a push to release button with one reader, then previously, instead of the Access Ultra, what you would have had to get is something like the G2 Starter Kit here. So that's got the Access Hub and then it's got the uh, G2 Reader. You do get 20 cards with it, which you don't get with the Access Ultra, but they're not overly expensive. And if you're using uh, Unify Identity Enterprise, then you don't actually need the cards. But this is what you would have had to buy previously. So this this Access Hub is actually really quite a capable device. It can have two readers off it, it can have two cameras off it, it's got loads of terminal options, but it is complete overkill if you just want a really simple solution like we're doing here today with just a lock and a push to exit. So, and it's pretty expensive. So you'd be paying nearly 300 pounds for that starter kit, which means if you've got lots and lots of internal doors with just that simple setup, then the cost, adds up very quickly so that is why the access ultra i think is going to do pretty well the alternative access ultra and the uh, access hub is also the enterprise access hub but this is for multiple doors uh, solutions so when you've got like it can do up to eight doors and you just wire them all back to this big hub and you have the readers all wired back here as well but that is for big deployments if you're just doing single door stuff or or just filling gaps where you can't get to the enterprise access hub for whatever reason then this is a great solution so let's just take a look at it in more detail so it's got one lock terminal as i said one exit uh, request uh, input as well um, you can use the card or the unified identity mobile app and also it is weatherproof so you can use it indoors or outdoors now the other great thing about this is it's PoE plus powered rather than PoE plus plus, which means that it can be powered by any Unify PoE switch or any current Unify PoE switch. Um, you don't have to try and get that PoE plus plus. With the access hubs, often businesses don't have uh, PoE plus plus switches, so you end up using injectors, which is just another sort of 25 pounds to add to the cost. So. That is pretty much it. I'm not going to go too much into more detail on here because we're going to take a look at what's in the box in a moment. Okay, so this is pretty much everything you get in the box. Let's take a look at the reader first. So it's pretty nice on the front. It's just got the little LED there as well and a nice unified logo. On the back, we've got the PoE Plus input and we've got the inputs for the uh, lock and the push to exit button. And that's about it. There's also a reset button at the top there. Um, it's pretty deep. So if you're not putting this into a drywall or a stud wall, then it's quite a big hole to cut out. So particularly if you're putting this into like brickwork, it's quite difficult to get that hole big enough. The other thing you'll notice, is there's not really much room for error. So if you put this in um, and you've made a big hole, especially in brickwork, you might find it's a bit more damage. So luckily what they include, as well as just a normal wall fixing bracket, which is what this one is, they also include this extra bit, which is essentially a plate that goes round the outside. So if you are putting into anything like brickwork and stuff like that, and you've sort of damaged the brickwork a bit, you can use this to cover up those sort of mistakes around the edge. And then you get a nice plate that goes round it, kind of like that. Oh, kind of like that. Um, so that's really handy as well. But you don't have to include that. That is uh, actually on Unified's website. They don't show that. It's just kind of in the box stuff. Right, uh, what else we got? We've got a little template here, which has just got a level on it. You may or may not use that. This is a little weatherproof grommet. It's very important that you put this on if you're gonna be using it outside. That's just to stop water ingress into the, uh, into the back of it. Then you get some screws, and these including the little screws, which essentially fix that to that. So you need to keep all of those. Um, and then there's this little thing. This little thing's really important because once you get this onto uh, the bracket, it's impossible to get it off without this little device. So you need to make sure you keep hold of that as well. So that's pretty much everything in the box. Let's get on to the next bit. 
Okay, so here I've got my little setup. I've got the Axis Ultra just sat on its front here. Um, and then I've got the electric catch lock and the push to release um, button. Now this will be exactly the same as the mag lock. So we're just using this one because I had one of these, but you could do the same thing with the mag lock. So uh, what I've done is got a cable. Um, this Cat5 is going into my Dream Machine SE and that's providing the PoE plus power that the Axis Ultra needs. And then out of the lock terminals, so you can probably just about see those there, the lock terminals on the back here, I've got some of this Ubiquiti access cable. This is actually their official stuff. And that's going to these Wagos here. Now the Wagos are just providing a connection to the lock cables. Um, and what I need is the white and the yellow to go to one, and then the black and the red to go to the other. Now it doesn't actually matter which way around those are, they will work both ways. Um, but you do need to make sure you're doing it for 12 volts. So if you lock like this one, it's got 12 and 24 options. You just need to make sure you follow the 12 volt instructions. And all I've done in these little way goes is just twisted those cables together. A bit, bit messy actually. And just pop that in there, but that just gives it the connection. Way goes are a great way to do that. Okay, and then on this side, uh, I've got again the little uh, uh, push to release terminals, and I've just popped that cable in there. And they are just going, if I turn this over, it's a bit easy to see. So there's a yellow cable on each side. So the yellow, one yellow is going to that, and one yellow is going to that. And that's just where this button completes the circuit. The blues aren't required at all. We can just tuck them away in the box when we put them in. And that is that. So one more thing to note. These uh, little locking terminals on the back, essentially, you have to push the cable in to get it to lock into place. Now, if you just had a twisted little cable like this, it wouldn't be strong enough. So you'd have to put those little crimps on the end to give it enough strength to push it straight in. Or you can do what I've done and then use some stiffer uh, cable, which is able to just push that down. If you want to get them back out again, you have to get a little screwdriver or something and just push those, those things down and it will let the cable back out again. So this is not adopted at the moment. It's just sat here, powered up. I've just plugged it in. I haven't done anything with it on the software side but it will still work. So electric catch locks by default will be in locked mode. So if you took the power out of that, it would remain locked. So essentially when you, uh, when you open it, you're giving it power to open it. So if I press this button now, you had probably just heard that unlock and then it's unlocked. And then after a few seconds, if we wait a second, it's locked again. So the push to release button should already work without any configuration whatsoever. If it doesn't work, then you've probably got some of the wiring wrong. Okay, so now I'm gonna log into Access and I'm gonna set this up. Okay, so I'm logged into my Dream Machine SE. I'm running 4.06. Access is already installed for me, but if you haven't installed it, you'll just get a little prompt like this to install it. And then it'll ask you uh, to accept the terms and conditions, etc. Okay, so if I go to Access, and then I'm gonna go down to my devices, and we can see the Ultra is here. So I'll just click to adopt that. This shouldn't need an update because I've already done that. So if I click to unlock, you can hear it, and the lock is unlocked. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go to users, and I'm gonna show you how to add a user and how to manage users. Now I can only do this in theory because I'm using Unify Enterprise Identity, so mine is kind of locked. If I click on this, you'll see that I need to um, edit it in the um, Identity Enterprise Manager Hub. So let's just show you what you would do though. So it's very easy to create a new user. You just literally click that button up there and then you can put the name and last name, email address. You can put a couple of bits of information there as well. And then basically you can assign them a card, a pin, etc. There's no pin on the Access Ultra, but if you are using other types of keypads, you can do that there. So if I click on me, for example, you'll still see the settings, but I can't edit them at the moment because it's locked because of the Identity Enterprise Manager. So down here you've got credentials. So basically you can assign a card. So you just pick this, uh, click this little plus sign here and then you can assign that user a card. You hold the card to the reader and then it will give them um, access through that card. You can give them a policies, etc. I'm not gonna get too much into that, but that's essentially what you can do. And then that card will be good to go. Now the reason I'm using Identity Enterprise Manager is because I want to be able to use the Identity Enterprise app to open the door and I wanna be able to show you that. So what I'll do now is I will go into that hub and we'll look at what we can do. Okay, so I'm in Identity Enterprise and I've gone to Organization Members and you can see me here. So I'll just click on this one and then I can go over to Permissions and this is exactly the same as you would get in Access. Basically, you can add a card here. So if I just press Add 
and then I select the lock that I want to add it to so I'll just collect that one if you've got lots of them then you can obviously add them to lots of them we can say continue and then it asks me to hold that card to the reader for five seconds okay so I've got the card here I just hold that and that is registered a card now I can just give that a name as well I'm just going to call that YouTube again Oh, YouTube and then we assign that card okay now that is now assigned and I've just got a notification on my identity enterprise to say that I've been signed a card so now with the card if I go back to the reader hold it on there and then the door is unlocked so that's worked straight away really simple to add that card and that like I said that's exactly the same as it is in access okay so I'm on my enterprise identity app and you can see already that I've got the doors up in the top left hand corner here and if I just tap that button the door is unlocked so I've done that again the door is unlocked okay so I've got the reader here I'm gonna get my phone hold it against it it's found it unlocked it and I'm in so that was really nice and simple okay one thing to know you can have the app running in the background so if I've got it running but not open it will still unlock the door. If you close the app and try it again, it won't work. So this is a minor frustration of mine with the Unify Identity Enterprise is that actually it doesn't run in the background. It has to just, has to be constantly running. So it's not gonna work. And for me, that's not really a problem, but if you've got lots and lots of employees, trying to explain that to them is gonna be a little bit frustrating. So we'll just try it again with it open. There we go. Okay, so hopefully I've helped you understand the merits of the Access Ultra. I think it's going to be a pretty successful device and I imagine we'll be installing quite a few of these ourselves. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.